Good morning to you, brothers and sisters. We want to thank God for giving us another day for us to give praise and worship God. Let us pray. Creator God, we worship you. The source of life, the creator of the world and all that is seen and unseen. You are the source of our life and we praise you for the promises of eternal life. Gracious God, we gather to celebrate our lives in you, rooted and grounded in your love. The love that we see in Jesus Christ, who lived among us, knowing our humanity in, in his fullness. Loving God, we worship you in the power of the Spirit, rooting us in your presence, filling us with your love, showering us with many blessings, be with us now as we worship you, God, our life. Amen. I would ask my brother, Benny, to come and do the reading of the word of God. That is coming from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 1 to 10. So we wait for brother Ben to do the reading. God bless and praise God for today. It's a... Uh... An amazing day in in Jesus, and uh, I just want to encourage you to be joyful and excited about following the Lord, and don't let life get too serious. It's um, a serious message, but we're we're called to be joyful and uh, just yeah, just love on Him and laugh with our brothers and sisters in Christ, and. Uh, do that sort of stuff. So, uh, as Johnson mentioned, Jeremiah 17, 1 to 10. It's a really good verse, so listen in. Judah's sin is engraved with an iron tool, inscribed with a flint point on the tablets of their hearts and on the horns of their altars. Even their children remember their altars and Asherah poles. Besides the spreading tree and on the high hills, my mountain in the land and your wealth and all your treasures I will give away as plunder together with your high places because of your sin throughout your country. Though uh, through your own fault you will lose the inheritance I gave you, I will enslave you to your enemies in the land you do not know, for you have kindled my anger and it will burn forever. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. He will be like a bush in the wastelands. He will not see prosperity when it comes. He will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him, he will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out, out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward a man according to his conduct according to what his deeds deserve. Thank you, Lord. This is the word of the Lord for this week. Uh, it's going to be a solid message, so uh, bring open ears, and I can't wait. Get Johnson back. Thank you, Johnson. Thank you so much, uh, Ben, for the reading of the word of God. Uh, <clears throat> My theme today is get rid of the trash in your life. Get rid of the trash in your life. One day I was uh, just reading and I come across uh, the place called Nom in Alaska on the edge of Bering Sea. It's like many villages of the Arctic. So the ground on which uh, the community sits is frozen, tundra. Bearing the dead is a real challenge. Sanitation landfills are unheard of. Garbage trucks do not howl off the kind of issues we live kept side. Instead, a typical front yard displays broken washing machines, 
junked cars, old toilets, scrap wood, piles of non-degradable refuse. Tourists who visit Nome in the summer are amazed at the debris and shake their heads. How would, could anyone live like that? They wonder what those visitors do not realize that for nine months of the year, Nome is under a blanket of snow that covers the garbage. So during those months, the town is quaint winter wonderland of pure white landscape. So your impression of norm would depend on which time of year you visit. Nine months of beauty, three months when the junk underneath comes through. You know, when you start to see the junk coming out. Many people are like that, aren't they? See them in situations and they impress you with their maturity, their grace, their style. See them in, in another, less guarded situations. All the junk underneath comes out. So the well-dressed businessman, a pillar of his church, a leader of men, but when he goes home at night, abusive of his wife and neglectful of children. The sad-eyed woman, who knowledgeable than most about the Bible, but given the chance, she slanders men of the people in her own church with unjustified criticism and backbiting. The talented newcomer, tall and handsome, but when he opens his mouth, all kinds of negative remarks about people of other skin colors, economic conditions, and the person is a racist. On the surface, people who are bristling with possibilities, but underneath is junk, is trash. In a sense, this is the human condition. Mark Taiwan said, no man deep down in the privacy of his own heart has any considerable respect for himself. Martin Luther once declared, when a man like me comes to know the blood of his own heart, he is not miserable only. He is absolutely misery himself. Samuel Rutherford, the great Scottish preacher once said, when I look at my sinfulness, my salvation is to me my Savior's greatest miracle. This is true. Even myself, when I look at my life, I found that this was the greatest miracle for me to be a Christian. That is exactly what it is about. This is the human condition. This is the human condition. And what does it say? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Most of us are fortunate. Really fortunate. We are able to keep the junk under control. <laughs> we are able to keep it pressed down, subdued. Sometimes it comes to the surface though, and then all hell breaks loose. And that's why Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 said, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward the man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. Nobody knows what is in my heart. I may be putting this beautiful shirt, but right within my heart, nobody sees what is happening. So the heart is deceitful. Only God knows the heart of a person. This is what it is. It's, it's hiding underneath this beautiful shirt is a lot of junk that is hidden, which you cannot see. So there was a story of a prisoner. His name was Bernard Crawford, and he escaped from prison. He accomplished this by diving into the back of the truck of a farmer. This farmer had come to the prison to collect food scraps from pig shop, pig slop. Bernard covered himself in the wet garbage and rode undetected for about half an hour. At that point, the combination of the smell and the cold temperature got to him, forcing him to jump out where he was spotted by a motorist who notified the police. We comfort ourselves that we can handle a bit, a big pig slope in our lives. We try to hide. 
but the truth will always come out. It's only when it overwhelms our lives that it's a problem. Pastor and author Tony Evans tells about a crack that appeared in his bedroom wall. Evans hired a contractor to fix the crack. The men plastered over the crack and painted the wall. And it looked as good as new. But within a week, the crack was back. The contractor came out, back out, replastered and repainted. A few days later, the crack returned. The same thing happened several more times with several different painting contractors. Then finally, a contractor told Tony what was really going on. You don't have a problem with your wall. He said, the problem is with the foundation of your house. So the foundation is shifting. Until it is fixed, the cracks will always be a problem. So the problem is not the crack, it's the foundation. An attractive home, but one with a flawed foundation. I wonder how many of us can relate to that. We may look very attractive, very handsome, very beautiful, but the foundation is not good. The foundation is not good. And this, of course, is what the Bible calls sin. Someone says the devil knows every weakness, knows just when to strike. You know he was an angel once and he knows what you like. For you, it might be the money. For me, it might be fame. But cover up your ears now when he whispers your name. Meaning that the devil knows every weakness. I believe this is what it means. Each of us has a point of weakness, a flaw in our foundation, junk underneath that on rail in an unguarded moment comes to the surface. You know, you meet people in the shop. You meet people everywhere. It could be in the public transport. And maybe you just say, can you move, push a bit forward? And you can see their reaction. Their reaction is telling something that is underneath them. We have those things, the garbage underneath us. But when it comes to the surface, it causes us and those we love with so much pain. As I said, the devil knows your every weakness. He knows just when to strike. You know he was an angel once and he knows what you are like. For it might be money, for it might be fame. Better cover up your ears when the, he, whispers into your, he whispers your name. So the prophet Jeremiah contrasts two kinds of people here. The cursed and the blessed. Listen to how he describes the cursed. Thus says the Lord, cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They live in the paved places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. That is the kind of a person who has been cursed. You can't even see when the blessings of God are coming your way. You are just like a, a plant that is growing in the desert. Now listen to how you describe the blessed one. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. Only in the Lord. Who trust in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by the water. Sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes. And its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to be fruitful. What beautiful words. What beautiful words. If these words were describing who I am, that would have been good. The difference between the case and the blessed is eternal. It has nothing to do with external circumstances. You can't judge whether a person is cursed or blessed by the kind of house he lives in or the kind of job he has. You can't tell it by her clothing or the car she drives. So there is a common mistake which a lot of people make. We judge a book by its cover. <laughs> to judge people by their external circumstances. Those poor people, you meet people and say, oh, these are poor people. I've heard so many people saying, 
describing other peoples that these are people are poor. We might say as we pass by the blood dirty dwelling or a rusted out old car. Because we see them driving an old car, we call them poor. Be careful. The people in that house or that old car may have something that we do not have. And they might not be that poor as we might think. God has some, some rich possibilities for your life. For one thing, you can learn to be genuinely care about people. You care about people. When you see people, you see the image of God. People you live with. People you work with. People you run into on the job. And at church, in a civic organization, God can make a new person out of you. He can change you to be somebody. As someone has put it, he can turn your scars into stars. He can put a smile back on your lips. He can make your life a blessing to others. We have been blessed so that we can bless others. He can give you something to live for and work for and hope for. That is what God is specialized in. He can change you to be something. So it's a different way of looking at life, isn't it? Some people look so great on the outside. They look so great on the outside. But we know that there is junk way down beneath their surface. Other people don't look nearly as good. But down beneath the junk is a beautiful flower garden. <laughs> they appear to be just ordinary, nothing people. But beneath them is really a garden of beautiful flowers. Being blessed and being cursed has nothing to do with external circumstances. It is something to do with the heart. That's why he said, the heart is so deceitful. Who knows it? Who understands it? Only God can understand the heart. So being blessed and being cursed is to do with the basic orientation of your life. Jeremiah described the case as trusting in mere mortals. That is, if the meaning of your life has to do with your toys and your accomplishments, then you are like a shrub in the desert. You can buy insurance to protect your health. You can strive diligently to stay on the right path and to protect your reputation. But if you only trust in the tools this world can provide, sooner or later, you are going to come across an obstacle in your path and you will not be able to move. And inward, you will shrivel and die. But if you trust in the Lord, if you trust in the Lord, you'll be able to plant deep roots that will yield a garden in the most extreme circumstances. It is a matter of orientation, and that is very important. You see, all of us have a junk within us. All of us, everyone has got a junk. Right? Everyone you think of has got a junk within them. Same. Maybe it was from a difficult childhood situation. Maybe our parents rejected us. Maybe they expected too much from us. Maybe we have been abused. All those things. Maybe on the other hand, we have no serious childhood issue and we simply grown up to be selfish, loose. The real question about whether we are blessed or cursed is not where we come from. The real question is to do with our commitment to God. How committed are we to God? How do you start your day as a Christian? How do you start a day? With a moan about your difficult, your life is, or with a prayer, thanksgiving, that God has given you a new day? Do you wake up and say, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful new day that I'm living in? Or do you always wake up complaining about what life is? Listen, all of us is a junk in, on the inside. But it does not have to determine our happiness and our success. What we need is orient our lives and align ourselves with God and his purpose for our lives. Let God handle our junk. Surrender them to God. He is in control. He is in charge of our lives. So, surrender the junks to God. That is very important. Ask God to remove that junk from us. Then move forward. Do they mind to be God's people? God can make a castle out of a junk. <laughs> Even God loves making castles out of junk. <laughs> That's what he does. 
If there's anybody here this morning who feels like your life is nothing but junk, you are just the person God is looking for. He's looking for you. You can make God's day. Let him turn your junk into something beautiful and majestic. That is what God can do. So brothers and sisters, let us realize the junk that is within us. And when you realize the junk within yourself, the only thing you can do is humble yourself. And you kneel down before the throne of God. And ask forgiveness. And ask God to remake you. To remold you. That is what you need. May God help us as we continue to meditate upon these words. That one day when I die, what will be of me? May the good Lord bless you from listening to this message. In Jesus' name, amen. It's now time for us to pray. Let us pray. Amazing God, we praise you for all that you have, that you have been. All that you are and all that you will be for us and for your creation. Before the beginning of your time, you, you were and you will still be at the world's end. You are wondrous in power, love, and grace. Amazing God, we praise you for all that you are in Jesus Christ who came that humanity may be saved. Living among us and showing us your way, you are wondrous in power, love, and grace. Amazing God, we praise you for all that you be in the spirit who comes that humanity might know your presence daily and be challenged and inspired just to be like you. Be with us, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we just want to thank God. There is no use again of thanking God when you know that beneath your heart there is a lot of junk. So why would you thank him? The only way for us to say thank you Lord for taking this junk away from us and we give him thanksgiving offering because we know who we are. So it's time for you to give your offering to God. Thanking God for what God has done. For whom much has been forgiven. Much is expected. It's time for us now to take our offering. Let us pray. Father, we bring our offering before you. Knowing that you are the remover of all junks that are beneath our heart. All the junk that we have, all the trash that we have, all the garbage that we have. Now as we make our time, as we give our time, may you bless it, Lord, so that it can be used in your kingdom. Bless this offering. Bless this Thanksgiving offering. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Let us um, receive grace. Lord, we thank you and praise for all the main blessings in our lives, for food and shelter, for family and friends, for the measure of health we have, and the main comforts we take for granted. Thank you also for your plain speaking. These blessings are not merited by anything we have done. Just as the problems of many, of those who hunger and are homeless, sick, are also undeserved. So Lord, in giving our heartfelt thanks, we ask that we might be a blessing to those whom the world wise often curse. 
Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you all. See you next week.